I got sick around the middle of April, right at the height of the pandemic. Uh, they sent me to the infirmary and put me in a four-man room with a bunch of other guys who were also sick, all tested positive for COVID-19. And al although I was showing symptoms, body aches, chills, uh, high fever, I tested negative, but because I was in a room with other people who were infected with COVID-19, I had to be put in quarantine. And for my birthday, I had to spend it in a solitary confinement setting. I left my job at the law library and as a HIV, STD, HVC facilitator in early March to work with a facility maintenance crew that was put together to fight the spread of this virus. Well, I was one of those who had an encounter with Mr. Covey. Yes, I survived unlike some of my fellows who didn't, that, that passed away. Well, basically, I deliver gallons of bleach two times a day to all the housing facilities. And I disinfect areas of high traffic. I love it, because it helps keep us safer. And our elders with compromised immune systems. Lulu, I hear you. I hear you coming down the hall. You walk a little funny-like, and you kick your little legs out a little bit. I can hear you coming. Right before you get to my cell, Lulu, you slow down. You know if you slow down right before you get to my cell, quiet-like like you do, you know that me and Vanessa will hear you. Vanessa will say, Lulu, did you eat? And you'll say, yeah. She's not convinced, not satisfied. Your tone was, meh. Well, here, have this. Man, she loved you, always looking out for you. Vanessa said your name all day long. I was across from her, so it was, Lulu, Lulu, Lulu. All day long. Peace, by now, we all are immersed in a world shaken up by COVID-19 and its collateral damage. Our daily lives have been Rubik cubed, and we just have to adapt to survive with optimism of living when a revised version of normalcy is reestablished. The most positive thing in my life right now is my mindset. I am willing to stay free from negative thinking and bettering myself no matter what the circumstances may be at the moment. It has been extremely difficult to accept the fact that as a human being, I am an afterthought in a public health crisis. I'm maintaining my sanity while cohabiting spaces with people that are visibly sick and some who are probably asymptomatic. COVID-19 continues the task of reshaping our lives. The timing of this virus created the perfect storm for many of us to address many unresolved issues. Whether in prison, at home, or in society, no one has a definite solution as to how we'll move forward as a whole. I will tell you one thing. I felt like Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris jumped me. I have never felt in my life what I felt. I was speaking to my father. My father's been dead 22 years. This thing was so rough that I was begging for the days to go fast. Now I see why so many people with health conditions have passed away. This thing is like a demolition man inside of you, running through your body, hitting you all over. I had a 103 temperature. Lulu, are those your feet coming this way? Cause I can hear you creeping. If it's flip-flops, it's a shower. If it's sneakers, it's the yard. One foot sounds heavier than the other foot. Yeah, that's you. I'm sure of it. I can't see you, but I can hear you. And if you go really, really slow, which is what you do when you're telling me with no words. Sam, Sam, give me something sweet. Sometimes I could grab it quick enough, grab it from my locker before you would actually get to me. The speed of your steps was the request. Never really did your words do the asking. I could hear that little crinkle you would make. You were- Just making sure the sweet was there. I don't know why, but that made me smile. Right in your hand. I always listen for the little crinkle. 
Basically, anyone who tested positive for COVID-19 or anyone who interacted with them had to be put into quarantine for at least a week before they could go back to their unit. Quarantine is an abbreviated version of solitary confinement. It still is. Locked up for at least 22 hours a day. This facility was more proactive than others, so the confirmed numbers were not as bad as they could have been. We saw our brethren get sick, and even some died. In no way do I feel good or even normal for that matter, about the absence of control over my own life. There's nothing so depressing than watching another man die in prison, even if it's only a day. Every incarcerated man or woman would rather take their final breath as a free man than in a cell or a hospital bed. I went through 24 t-shirts in three days and I only have 14. So you go figure that out. Since being incarcerated, I have seen and heard so much bullshit that I will carry with me for the rest of my life. In a way, it's like school. Some things you can't learn until you experience them. This CO just woke me up. I was having a beautiful dream about two females out in society. We were having a really good time. They were celebrating my release back into society when I hear someone screaming. On the count! On the count! Everyone standing so I can see Would you. Would you shut up? It's too early in the morning for this. Everyone on the count! Pfft, gotta be kidding me. Talk about being frustrated. Shit. I was really enjoying being with them two females out in society. They were so beautiful, wearing a catnip bodysuit. Ever imagine having a good time and suddenly you wake up and realize a long, hard day had gone by? To realize it was all a dream? For a minute, I said to myself, this CO has got to be a comedian, waking me up for the count. I was about to have a great time with these two beautiful women when I hear, on the count, what a comedian. I am just working hard, keeping my spirits, and trying to pass my good energy to those around me as well that need it. This is not easy, especially with the cancellation of visits, family reunion program, and other activities. As crazy as it might sound, now it feels like real jail. You look forward to escaping the environment through RTA three to five days a week, depending on your schedule. You also look forward to seeing your loved ones too. All that is out the window. Every day, I witness the effects of our complete change of circumstances with the men around me who are constantly struggling to make sense of their own worlds. It's a painful sight to witness another human being's mental health deteriorate irreversibly without help or support to make a difference. The July humidity sits on everything in my cage, including my chest, gluing me to the mattress. My head swivels toward the makeshift calendar hanging from the gray locker jutting out of the wall. The square grids marked out by strong black diagonal lines stop in mid-April, freezing time a month into the pandemic. Schlap. A thick envelope is slapped on my gate. Out of my throat croaks. What day is it? The question somehow makes its way through the oppressive ambience to my neighbor's cage. Wednesday, last I checked, July 8th, 2020. You know the day after Tuesday, July 7th, 2020? Man, you got the pandemic head. You gotta keep sharp. The words shocked my eyes wide open. Since the lockdown began, there's been no programs, no reason to interact or challenge myself. The 8th of July? How long have I been lying here? Good news. Uh, maybe. Something from rehabilitation through the arts. Probably another check-in. My index finger tears into the thick envelope and races up the crevice of the envelope. Two clear cassettes are nestling inside. Are you serious? I take out the accompanying papers from the envelope, hoping I won't need the cassettes. No dice. Damn it! Seven months since I got rid of the Walkman. Terrence's voice, roughened by over 30 years of incarceration, finds its way into my cage. You gonna leave me hanging all night? Oh, uh, it looks like some sort of writing workshop. Something about a hero character. Oh, shit. Like the Black Panther? Man, that shit is lit. Yeah, I guess so. Yo, why you saying like that? 
What's wrong? Why aren't you excited? A, I'm not a creator. And B, I don't have a cassette player. The silence sits between our cages, caught by the voices around us. You know you can do this, right? I've read some of your poetry, and you do a great job communicating ideas that way. Maybe you could write it as a poem. Or you could start with a poem and then make it a prosy. Like Dante. And I'm pretty sure I can get the 411 on a cassette player. So that's A, no problem, and B, no problem. I hear Terrence opening a bag of potato chips. The rustling of the bag blends into his deep vibrato. Yeah? Well, I guess I'm all out of excuses. Besides, are you going to do the time or let the time do you? Be your own hero. Fuck it. I got this. I have to do this. I have to clear my head. I need to focus. I didn't even think it was July. I took out the paper. Me, a hero. I said under my breath. So, where's the cassette player? Dum Dum got one. Sir L, my other neighbor, pipes up. Yo, Sir L, what'd I tell you about tapping the line? We are all on the same team, okay? Sir L's question opens a void. Sir L has a long-standing debt with Terrence. Yeah, I guess so. Terrence seems to be chewing his words. So I'll get Dum Dum's Walkman. Yo, Dum Dum, I need your Walkman. Sir L's voice booms throughout the block. L, stop calling me like that. I told you about putting my business on the gate. Sorry, but it's important. Quiet desperation colors Sir L's voice. Maybe he thinks he can set things right with Terrence. It's an emergency. My neighbor is creating a hero. It's not really a, an emergency. You mean like the Black Panther? How the fuck would I know? I'm coming down. Sir L snakes a white net bag to the floor outside his cage's gray gate. A line made out of an old sheet coils its way on top of the net bag. Sir L's hand emerges over the gate with the end of the line tied to a bar of white state-issued soap. The words Corecraft are engraved on one side. The bar blurs as it spins around. Sir L's wrist bends down and then jerks up, building momentum into the centrifugal motion. Sir L's fingers let go and the bar pops up and hits the top of the walkway's tier. Damn. I got this. Sorrel draws up the line to get the bar of soap and begins the process all over again. You can do it! Asshole. The bar of soap flies past the cages on the company. Got it! I put my mirror on the gate and see other mirrors are out. Dum Dum's hands draw in the line, hand over fist, causing the net bag to shimmy back and forth down the company. The taut line eventually disappears, followed by the net bag into Dum Dum's cage. The mirrors stay out. Are they waiting for the Walkman? I tap the wall between mine and Sir L's cage. I try to whisper the words around the thin wall separating us. You better snatch that line when he pulls it. Everybody's looking. The bar of soap slides past my cell. The soap is jostled before it whips past my cage. Sir L grabs the line and starts pulling with everything he's got. The taut line seems to go on forever before the appearance of the net bag makes its appearance outside of Dum Dum's cage and onto the company's narrow walkway. I mutter under my breath like a mantra. Go, go, go. The net bag slows once. The mirror in front of that cage dips in while another hand slips through the bars towards the bag. The bag scurries by, slightly snagging on the fingertip. The net bag whips into Sir L's cage, and he yells down the company to let Dum Dum know he received the contents of the bag. Touchdown! I will always associate you with the smell of undiluted germicide, a cleaning product you always had in your hand, your rag, and the chemical dark green, like our uniforms. I like the smell of it. Strong and clean. It could make a person a little high if you got a good whiff of it. And when you came around, those dummies had better quick scatter, cuz. I'm trying to clean. Most of all, I loved your raspy voice. So awesome. Kind of low, but authoritative too. You didn't have to say much to be heard. You could just yell and yell at those COs. And well? That's Lulu. Whatever those young whippersnapper COs were about to say, you had no time for them. And you sure told them so without speaking. Just an eye roll, a grumble, and... Leave me alone. Body language. I would look over your shoulder and see the curve of their smiles while you would shake your head in disdain at them. Damn fools! I think they liked you scowling at them. They must have known they deserved it. They let you get away with being real sassy. 
Number one, out of respect. And number two, you are hilarious. You could always count on me, Lulu. Be it a peppermint or a bear claw, a bag of shebang chips, a Raymond noodle soup, or a fat girl cake. I know you got something. I did. I always did. I wait, watching the shadows grow across the floor and inch up the wall. Scratches are visible underneath the paint. Instead of days marked off, names, gangs, and geography are chiseled into the walls that have stood for over a century. A white net bag flaps at the gate. I jump up and grab the bag, pulling it into my cage. The bag feels light. Inside is a note. Hey, I know you need this cassette. I need to get paid for putting all this together. Send over two bricks, and I'll send over the tape player. Are you serious? I didn't ask for the Walkman. I try to push the net bag back into Sorrel's cage, but every thrust is resisted, resulting in the bag looking like a sad balloon. L, what the fuck are you doing? Dumb dumb, he got it. No, 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 no. I, I, don't, I don't have anything. Don't be playing with me. I need that Walkman. L, you know I didn't get a tablet because I didn't want the government all up in my business. What's he saying, L? Dum Dum's voice echoes anger. Yo, Dum Dum, I don't have a clue. I just handed him the tape player, and now he's saying this stupid shit. You know what I gotta do. You got me on those three bricks to make it happen? This motherfucker thinks this shit is a joke. He's about to find out. Run that shit. I look at the gate, then through it. Over time, the windows have grown dimmer as panes are replaced with frosted plexiglass. Some windows are open the full 45 degrees while others are stuck closed. The windows are a mirage that air passes through them. No air is moving. Everything is dead. I look at my pens. A long time ago, a guy told me to always carry a pen because it was like having a legal weapon. His advice seemed simple back then, but now I had so much to lose. My family, parole, the box, or worse, my life flashed through my mind's eye. Why are you doing this? Confusion colored my words. I could ask you the same thing. How you gonna take that man's property like that? Sir L is hyping himself up. If I put a mirror out and look into his cage, I expect him to be listening to a DMX tape trying to get his energy up before he attacks me. A tapping sound on my wall lets me know Terrence is calling me. I step up to the gate. Don't worry, I got this. I sigh as my eyes well up. No, T, I don't bring problems to my friends. I guess it's true that prisons are the new mental hospitals. The gates pop open. My hand strangles the pen. I don't want to die like this. I do not I want, want to die, die like this. T is out on the company and in Sir L's cage before I can take a step towards the gate. The wall between my cage and Sir L's ring out as bodies collide. The sound of Sir L's cage slamming shut thunder down the company. People run down the company. The crowd grows, clogging up the narrow walkway in front of our cages. The wall between our cells communicates each blow with thuds. My stomach is an anxious mix of disbelief and sadness. The crowd grows with every thud. At one point, the crowd let out a collective. Ooh. A silence falls across the crowd. Everyone starts chanting. K-O, 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 K-O. T flashes the Walkman. Yo, Dum Dum. You looking for this? Everyone on the company had heard the back and forth and now saw the truth for themselves. T taps the Walkman on the bars of my cage. He's good, Dum Dum. Just return it in a couple of days. Dum Dum is smiling ear to ear over the adrenaline of watching the fight. I don't want this shit. Well, you got it now. T's last words haunt my cage as I sit silently between two empty cages, holding the cassette player. I'm never going home. And I know you can do something powerful. Be the hero, man. I wasn't playing when I said it earlier. The words float in the air, sparkling, waiting for me to take them in. I inhale them. A frosty, tingling feeling shoots across my face, down my throat, and into my hands. The sensation, like a shot of lightning, flashes down my spine and legs into the floor. I am not, not what this place says I am. I am. Maybe I am the hero of my own life. I push play on the Walkman. Hi, my name is Kate, and I'll be leading you through the Hero's Journey workshop. Ain't nobody gonna argue with Lulu. I loved it when you would yell at them. The people who weren't paying attention to your cleaning, 
I loved the anticipation of you hollering at those new to the unit dummies because it always came like clockwork right before the one o'clock movement. And us who knew better loved watching the unsuspecting victims. They had better move. One sideways look from you? Oh, they moved, Lulu. <laughs> they sure did. Ooh! A week later, the gate to the cage of where T was housed pops open. T's raspy tremolo fills my cage like it had never left. How are you here? <laughs> the ticket was not written correctly and was thrown out. So you gonna keep me waiting, huh? The story, numbnuts. Oh, yeah. I just finished the first draft. I thread the pages through the bars. The humidity is damp as ever. I noticed the date of July 15th. The strong slashes of diagonals filled all the boxes prior to the 15th on the calendar. Hey, T, when I finish the story, maybe I could take you through the stages of the hero's journey. It helps the time go by. I wait. While I sit on my bed looking at the notes I've written, I add, You can be the hero, T. Nah. The hero's the guy that's too stupid to stay alive. I really want to thank each and every one of you for skills, memories, and the safe space you've given me in the most unlikely of places. I was able to find good people in a bad environment. Thank you for giving me a place to just be Dustin again. Please inform my teachers that I am practicing every day, and I have already mastered the two songs you provided. In Sharon's class, I gave a speech from the perspective of the mother of the young lady whose life I took. She gave a presentation to the parole board, um, which I heard through the paper was opposing my release. The speech I gave was a guess at what she might have said. It was powerful, standing there in her shoes, m metaphorically speaking. And when I read Sharon's evaluation later that night. I don't agree with that woman. I, I instantly burst into tears of gratitude and a chunk of the, of the rock that protected my heart fell away. I'm keeping my fingers moving. Uh, I often hear my teacher's voice correcting my finger placement and encouraging me along. <laughs> RTA's interest in knowing how I'm doing really means a lot during these hard times. I've lost my mother to COVID-19, and in a way I'm numb, not because I want to, but I have to because to express my hurt with these fellas in here, I feel will only be make me looked on as weak. I do miss the workshops, especially since that's where I could show my true self. My mom was my everything. So I thank RTA for reaching out. Sometimes all one wants is to be heard. My self-criticism discourages me from pursuing a deeper understanding of the act of writing. I often have ideas that I would like to write down, but refrain, because I don't feel as though those ideas are important or potent. This project, however, presents a validity to those ideas that I did not recognize before. In spite of the overall stress this abnormal environment produces, I challenge myself every day to do something productive in order to keep my sanity in check. I'm reminding myself to focus on what really matters, Take one step at a time, because the uncertainty of tomorrow's experiences is even stronger now. The journal you've given me has energized me amidst a stagnation outbreak. Despite that, the guys in our unit did a great job keeping the peace and keeping our spirits up. And, and thanks to guys like uh, Tim and, and Freddie, they fostered a helpful environment on our gallery. I'm waiting for the day when we're all back performing, or better yet, expressing the things that we've learned through these trying times. Uh, when I got sick, Alf and my, my brother Wise made sure I had something to eat every day. And uh, for my birthday, uh, Alf made me some cheesecake and cherry pies. Oh, that's whipped cream cheese in sugar and sweet milk and uh, cherry filling wrapped in tortillas. Delicious. Delicious. Finally, as my own mind wanders on the brink, I keep the people who love me most 
on the forefront of my mind. This entire situation has not been easy on anyone, no matter what side of the wall we are on. And I'd be lying if I didn't admit that the extra services provided have been just enough to keep the phantoms at bay. Prisons are an extension of society. While the men and women have committed acts against the whole of society, that does not mean they lose their status as humans. Everything that people have had to endure during the pandemic in the general population has made it over the walls and impacted the men and women who were incarcerated. We're all in this together. Lulu, you won't be coming down the corridor no more. There's an empty cell at the end of the hallway. I know that they will wait some time to fill it. At least a week or two. I hope for that anyway. For the girls to heal and to have a little time to get used to that kind of quiet. There will be a silent refusal to fill your cell. The officers will do count. They'll look in Lulu's cell. You will not be there. It will be a green mat mattress and no bedding. There won't be any crinkling today up and down the corridor. They all will say, Well, Lulu got all the sweets she wants now. She got all the damn sweets she wants. That's right, Lulu. And Shaniqua will say, I'm gonna miss Lulu's crazy ass. They will say, Me too. And your best friend, Miss Smalls, will say, It's just not right not to see her coming down the hall. And people will be quiet out of respect for you and Miss Smalls' friendship. Nobody's gonna clean those tables at 12.52 p.m. either. You can be sure of that. But Lulu, your God saw fit to get you out of that hell hole. And I don't know what kind of cleaning that real angels do, but I'm for certain that you're disinfecting from above, because that would be your kinds of heaven where the brooms are always new and there are enough paper towels at all times. You're in a place now where you will never have to crinkle in secret. But hey, Lulu, Lulu, I liked having that secret with you. <laughs>